just swipe down. Just... Okay. Uh, <coughs> again, I am Dr. Amanda Dempsey, and I am a psychology professor. And my students have been working on projects over the last semester and into this one on dark personality traits and looking at different aspects of dark personality traits and their correlates. So Dr. Rayburn was actually really interested before you got here about gender differences in the dark traits. And we were like, you have to wait until Kaylee's at 10. Um, and so Kaylee is specifically looking at um, sex roles and uh, gender and how they relate to sex guilt, indirect aggression, sadism, and narcissism. Woo! Um, hi, I am Kaylee, as she said. Um, and uh, the research that I conducted, like she said, was on uh, sex roles and how they predict sex guilt, indirect aggression, sadism, and narcissism. I really wanted to find out whether um, the sex roles would influence these things more than gender because previous research has shown that males tend to be higher on dark personalities, dark personality traits, sorry, and then uh, women tend to be higher on indirect aggression. So what I ended up doing was uh, taking all of that and trying to look at femininity and masculinity. I hypothesized that females who are high on masculinity would be higher on um, indirect aggression, sadism, and narcissism, but have a lower um, result, <laughs> a lower results on sex guilt. And then um, on the other side, I hypothesized that men would, um, sorry, <laughs> men who scored higher on the femininity side of the bim sex role inventory would have lower um, set, not sex guilt, higher sex guilt and lower narcissism, sadism, and indirect aggression. Within that, the difference, let me just step on this side so I can like point. Um, within that, uh, I used the short doc tetrad, which I specifically looked at the narcissism and sadism aspects of the short dark tetrad. That way it would kind of break it up and show different sides of it. And then I used uh, the vast varieties of sadistic tendencies uh, measure for uh, more of an in-depth look at sadism. And then I used, of course, like the BIM sex role inventory because it would show the femininity and masculinity and the sex roles that can differentiate these things. And I used um, the Mosher sex skill uh, measure. And uh, one of the example questions from that was masturbation helps one feel eased and relaxed. And if you know it's if you highly agree with that, then you have less sex guilt compared to someone who didn't agree with a question like that. Um, and then the last one that I did was the indirect aggression scale, and that had three subscales. It was malicious humor. <clears throat> Sorry, I should have brought water up here. Um, malicious humor. Um, <laughs> social exclusionary and guilt induction so those were the three subscales for the indirect aggression and it was the aggressor version and with that one of the questions was purposely left them out of activities so that's one of the example questions for that um, just like the others who have presented before me <laughs> Uh, we only had 180 participants, <coughs> and the amount of men was lower than the amount of women, which I believe partly is due to the fact that we did end up only giving it to um, psychology students, and there tends to be more females in the psychology major. Thank you so much. <sighs> I'm pretending like I'm not shaking right now. But um, the results showed that with females who were high in masculinity, which is the masculinity is on this side and femininity is on this side, and females who were high in masculinity were higher in narcissism, which goes with my hypothesis. And um, it kind of came close to being significant when it came to sadism, but it was only close not there just yet. 
Um, but then with masculinity for males, males who were high in masculinity also were high in narcissism, which I found really interesting, although it was not part of my hypothesis. Um, and then for femininity, that word is a hard word, femininity, here we go, um, females who scored lower in femininity scored higher in all forms of indirect aggression and both um, scales for sadism. Although that was not part of the hypothesis, it's very interesting. And the most interesting to me was that males who scored higher in femininity scored higher in narcissism, which is the complete opposite of what I expected. And um, for the others, like uh, masculinity for males, the sadism, indirect aggression, macho sex skills, like they didn't really fit with the results that I was hoping for, but um, I, I, the most interesting to me is still the high femininity narcissism for males because it is kind of polar opposite. Um, but I do believe that one of the main, um, I guess, faults is a good word, I guess, <laughs> for this research was the male population being so small with doing gender and sex role research. So that was the main, and then as well as that, I also believe that the amount of surveys did kind of deter some people from wanting to finish it, or you know, just kind of you have the bias with that and stuff like that. So I do believe that had a part to it, and I hope that with future research, I can identify more of the different aspects of it with a bigger uh, population of males, hopefully. <laughs> Um, and give the surveys to more um, majors or the public because, I mean, most of these are generalized, you know, like indirect aggression, sadism, and narcissism. These are not clinical, so it would just be a generalizable way of, like, saying I might be a little bit sadistic, but I'm not, like, <laughs> clinically sadistic. <laughs> so, yes. Apologize if I talk to you. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you for the meetings and thank you for the talk. That's yes. nice talk. Look, as a mathematician, I'm an applied mathematician. I'm, I, I always see the things like different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So here are actually four key points. Okay, male, female, and femininity, masculinity, right? Yes, so and highs and lows. Uh, female, uh, femininity, female, uh, masculine, uh, narcissism, all those things are like coming. So uh, one is like, uh, female masculinity is missing or it's not related? Oh no, female masculinity is right here. It's um, That was one of the ones where uh, females, like it was the one result that turned out to be um, part of my hypothesis, that females who were high in masculinity would also be high in narcissism. However, I also believed they would be higher in sadism and indirect aggression. However, those results did not prove to be Yes, Correct. that's interesting. Like, uh, like just asking curiosity, another perspective. Like, this is data is saying, like whatever survey you have, right? Mm -hmm. We believe data. Like, how do you see this data reflection with the, our natural behavior or like the society we are living in or family? It's like correlating or like totally different. Or what, what, what are your thoughts? I, I do believe that it is, it kind of does correlate with how society is now and especially within the places that we live because within the south that was one of the main reasons i wanted to look at femininity and masculinity is because the south tends to be more um restrictive within their sex roles so i wanted to see how that would you know affect these things and for women who are high in masculinity to be higher in one of the dark traits that men are normally the highest in it was very interesting and really good to see that compared to like if it weren't there at all. <laughs> yeah. Because your uh, research is showing very interesting projection on narcissism that causing because that's the human characteristic causing like if this is taken deviated to negative positive, mm -hmm. bad things happen. Yeah. So we are totally motivated to do something. Exactly. So yes. That's why that part is very interesting. 
you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I, you probably covered this, but I missed it, which yeah. was sex guilt for masculine females versus feminine males. Like, what, what, what did you see in there? There wasn't any uh, significant results from that. Okay. I was really hoping there would be, yeah. but the results for that weren't significant enough to be um, part of the do, do you guess that that, as a follow-up, has to do with you're dealing with mainly college students, and so younger people as a whole may have lower values for that, so there's maybe less of a span? Um, I do think that that might have a little bit to do with it, but <coughs> one of my main like predictions is that it was the male population that kind of like threw it off, sure. because there were only 39 males compared to like the 100 and 40 females, mm -hmm. so that kind of made that gender difference and biological sex and all of that, looking at all of that kind of became more of a oopsie, <laughs> I guess, like a harder to find situation. So my question is, it's, it's related to this, Yes. but when you, you, you made a comment when you asked the question about, I'm, I'm assuming that you you did mention one specific question about masturbation and it being relieving stress. Did you qualify that for the person taking to make to say, have you ever, or is this something you've ever experienced? Because just by answering the question, agree or disagree, and this may be naive, but they may never have experienced that. So the, how could they agree or disagree, and why would that make them necessarily have self guilt or not? You see what I'm saying? Did you yes. qualify that they had performed that particular sex act? Um, that wasn't qualified within this measure. Um, however, I would love to do something that would ask those questions, like use a different measure next time. Mm -hmm. um, but to my knowledge, I'm not sure if there is another one that asks those specific questions. I would just be questions. curious. Yes. Sarah Spires did that last week in her okay. thing. Okay. She looked at actual abusers of those things and also looked at whether there is correlated to their attitudes and yes as they have more experiences their attitudes toward those things become firmer mm -hmm. but also yeah it is also this age group in general tends to be less inhibited about these right. things because it's just a generational thing that they aren't yeah. as inhibited and as an older age group is too yes and i suppose it's possible they haven't done i mean not every yes. 19 year old has experience exactly yes. and that was one thing that I did kind of think about was the fact that with some of this, it doesn't mean that you've experienced any of it. Mm -hmm. um, however, from the perspective of like, I was looking at it in the sense of, in a generational perspective right. and how, you know, society will influence you yep. to answer in a certain way because of how this generation is more acceptant of sex and uh, intercourse and stuff of that nature. Whereas past um, generations have not been so accepting of being vocal about these things. So, yes. Oh, yes. I was just going to follow up with a comment and okay. say the belief aspect, you know, because you were talking about quantification of this question. Mm -hmm. but also, from another standpoint, I think asking them, you know, it, it's almost intrinsically looking yeah. at their value belief system. Yeah. That is also a very interesting concept, it especially is. with the age range that you have. Yes. And the comparison to an older population to see how those shifts could happen. Yes, and I think that that would be amazing to do for future uh, research with looking at the age as well as, you know, sex guilt. And sadism was one thing that I was really hoping to find more results with, but even with that, I still believe that it was very interesting and knowledgeable for sure because even if it didn't fit completely, right. it's very, very cool. <laughs> yes. The answer some of the questions that I had from the other person here, oh. about, particularly about how you were dealing with looking at how they were raised, what, what you were testing for with that. The one thing that kind of caught my attention from a biology standpoint, you talked about your differences and your surprises with the male-female interaction, mm -hmm. was you have the social impact that's impacting that. But there's also hormonal differences in yes. those groups. So it would be kind of, I mean, not that you can do it, but it would be kind of interesting if you could get a 
blood sample at the time they're taking the test. Yes. And do like what are the hormone levels, what are some of the features? You know, in addition to that, there can also be obviously genetic, but there could also be other environmental factors. Oh, one hundred percent. The one that comes to mind was years ago was phthalates and plastics. Mm -hmm. If you're exposed to more phthalates, there's obviously there were some other feminization traits and things of that that were actually biologically negative. Yes. And so I could see an interaction maybe explaining some of your surprising results that you had there. Yes, and I agree with you on that. And it's um, one of the things that I also thought about was the biological <coughs> of it because it kind of, if you do show the difference, but I was mainly looking at how society and these other factors will affect it because there is a lot of research on the biological sex and the differences between and how they're similar. And there's also a lot of research on the sex roles. But with this, um, it, I was mainly looking for the sex roles, but the, um, Biological sex was still important. I would have loved to have a more uh, more LGBTQ community part of the research because it would m show more of a variety. But the population for that, because I did, we did, you know, counter that in with the question, but there was li yeah. no significance, like at all. <laughs> yeah, but again, like that. That, I see societal influences. I'm, like, so I'm just thinking just basically on just straight up biology. Some people okay. genetics just have more hormones, more hormonal features in those areas yes. on that. And so just a just a snapshot of that is kind of where I was going with that. Okay. Okay. But anyway, but yeah, very good. Okay. Okay. Why are these questions so like I guess I just wonder what the spectrum is it like agree or disagree or is it like <coughs> strongly agree? It's both in the sense of you get the highly agree, slightly agree, you know, agree. Um, that's how, like, it was on that Likert scale showing the difference between those, but not having to stick to yes or no because that would influence a lot of the questions due to the fact that a lot of people can't say that they strongly agree with one specific thing unless it does characterize them completely. So, yes. Any other questions? Do, do, do we get time? I have one more comment. Um, yeah, you get one. Okay. So just <laughs> asking the Professor Davies that one. So when you are just like taking the data, so male has like around 50, right? Yes. Survey, and female is 150 or something, right? Yes. So uh, there is some <laughs> yes. big gap. So yes. uh, how do you address those things? Like you say like the comment is sex is not playing an important role mm -hmm. for this thing. Here, like your results is kind of similar, close, right? But your data is like you have 150 surveys. Yes. How do you reflect those things um, from your side? Like? I guess it's mostly due to, like, I mostly do it with just looking at more of the femininity females and masculinity females because, you know, like I had said before, I really hope I did at least. <laughs> For low femininity females, they score high on both the sadism scales and all forms of indirect aggression. And that is to be expected to a certain degree, especially with the indirect aggression, because there has been many research like provided that shows how women tend to be higher on indirect aggression and males tend to be higher on physical aggression. So I kind of expected that part to show up. I was hoping that it would be different, but I expected that it could happen. However, with the sadism, I, if it were to show, like past research has shown, <laughs> then mass, high masculinity males would have also shown um, higher sadism. However, that wasn't really the case. So that was where I was kind of directed towards, is doing that, looking more into that, instead of just the biological sex and the amount of participants between biological sex. Although, I, I really wish I could have gotten more. <laughs> so what he's asking is, does, but mathematically, how did you account for it? And the answer is, we ran two tests and we hope for the best, and we 
this hope is that it's out. You know, that it, it has been robust enough to adapt to that and just know that there's a limitation. If obviously if you were ever going to try to publish anything, yes. you would have to have a much bigger set sample. But Oh, yeah, the medium oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, oh. yeah. There we go. Right. So, yes. okay. yeah. Sorry, Sorry, I forgot to add that. Now I understand. Now so, I understand. Yeah, yes. this is going to be as kind of dicey, but. Because okay. <laughs> I, okay. I was going 39. I remember my old stats class. If you got up to the end of 40, a lot of your stuff gets to a, 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 your mean gets to a good thing in yes. most, most biological settings. Yeah, and in psychology, I mean, it's to have enough power to detect differences, we need more like bigger part that's are not very large um, that they were looking between but yeah so this subsample is tiny and definitely needs more routine more balance to get broad that's good all right well let's thank our speaker again